Ticks are spreading like wildfire. No, not the small bug-like parasites that can cause Lyme disease. These are ticks without the K, or the sudden muscle contractions that occur in cases of Tourette syndrome. Since the start of 2020, there has been an unprecedented surge in the number of children and teenagers coming in for medical attention related to ticks. One specialty clinic reported an increase in referrals for a sudden onset of ticks in adolescents from a baseline of four per year to now nearly four per week. What is driving this massive increase in ticks? A possible culprit is the social media site TikTok. Videos featuring ticks are a popular staple on this platform, with the most watch clips getting billions of views. Notably, the popularity of these videos seems to have exploded right before the surge in tick patients occurred, suggesting a potential link. Other clues that hint at a common origin range from the pedestrian to the bizarre, with one study reporting that even the specific words seen in tick disorders appear to follow online trends, with the word beans, of all things, becoming suddenly and unexpectedly common as a tick. So is that the answer? Can ticks spread over the internet via nothing more than just watching a video? Not exactly. Researchers were curious to understand this phenomenon better, so they compared the videos on TikTok with the medical knowledge that has been accumulated about ticks since Tourette first published about them in 1884. What they found was rather curious. While the movements in these videos resembled ticks, there were some key differences. While most people have ticks that are relatively minor or simple, like blinking or grimacing, the ticks on social media were much more likely to involve large and complex movements of the arms, legs, and trunk. In addition, social media ticks almost universally featured the most severe aspects of the disorder, like yelling profanities or injuring oneself, that are relatively rare in real life. However, these differences could be accounted for by the fact that these more outlandish and dramatic ticks are more likely to get attention online. For that reason, we have to go beyond just watching the most popular videos and instead look at what these patients tell us during a complete medical evaluation. These clinical interviews, however, only revealed more differences. Most of these patients were teenage females, which is particularly notable because ticks are usually diagnosed in school-age boys around the age of 6 or 7. In addition, these ticks often came on suddenly or abruptly, rather than the gradual onset that is more typical. They also could not be suppressed or held for a later time like usual ticks can, and they were more often linked to mood and anxiety disorders than the conditions most commonly associated with ticks like OCD or ADHD. Perhaps most importantly, the severity of these ticks appeared to be highly dependent on the specific situation that the patient was in with ticks tending to markedly increase around other people and during times of emotional stress. Overall, the researchers concluded that there were enough differences between ticks and these tick-like behaviors that they are probably not a type of tick, despite how they might appear at first glance. So if these aren't ticks, what are they? The interpersonal nature of these movements brings to mind another phenomenon known as social contagion. Humans are born to imitate each other. One of the happiest moments of a new parent's life is the first time their baby smiles back at them. People applying for a job tend to get hired more often when they subtly copy the actions of the person interviewing them. We even have specific nerve cells known as mirror neurons that fire when we observe someone else behaving in a similar way to us. We are literally wired to copy each other. At times, this tendency towards imitation can manifest in odd or unusual ways. There have been cases of dancing mania that have been recorded over the centuries, with the impulse to dance uncontrollably for weeks or even months straight, spreading rapidly through hundreds or thousands of people at a time. More recently, behaviors ranging from lighthearted memes to more dangerous acts have shown the ability to spread rapidly through groups. Even before social media, ticks appear to have been susceptible to social contagion, with sudden attacks of mass tick-like behaviors having been reported in places across the world, from upstate New York to western Nepal. With the internet being more accessible than ever, the power of social contagion to spread has been amplified to a degree unlike any we have seen before. Like a wildfire blazing through dry grass, tick-like behaviors spread best under certain conditions. This behavior often helps people to meet a need that they cannot fulfill elsewhere, in the case of social media, 
The need may be partly financial, as many of the most popular TikTok accounts featuring tick-like behaviors are either selling merchandise or can be contacted for paid appearances. Off social media, however, the need may be more personal in nature. Many patients with tick-like behaviors report experiencing severe anxiety and depression and often struggle with feelings of loneliness. One particularly illuminating study showed that non-conscious mimicry is much more common when people feel isolated or excluded, with a tendency to specifically mimic people who appear to be part of a privileged in-group. With influencers getting showered with views and attention for ticking online, it's no surprise that mirroring of this behavior is on the rise. This suggests that the cure for tick-like behaviors isn't found in shaming people for their actions or in banning social media, but rather in doing what we can to combat loneliness by building stronger relationships. While the rise of TikTok in 2020 was one of the factors that likely played a role in the emergence of tick-like behaviors, the COVID-19 pandemic also occurred at the same time, with social distancing and school closures making people feel lonely and isolated on a massive scale. Perhaps what is needed isn't more social media, but instead more of what we know to be effective in making people feel happy and content, forming close relationships, feeling needed in the world, and doing something you love. While tick-like behaviors are likely just the latest form of social contagion, they will not be the last, so long as we continue to struggle with having a sense of attachment and belonging in a world that feels more connected, yet somehow more distant than ever before. Thanks for watching. It's great that mental health is a common topic of conversation online, but the downside of this is that misinformation about these conditions is more widespread than ever before. If you'd like to learn more about the actual data and science behind mental health, consider checking out my book Memorable Psychiatry or some of the other videos on this channel. You can also subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Bye for now.